Hi, I'll leave Veris here with Phototech Tuesday. Each week I'll be posting a new video about photography, technology, art, and everything in between, including AI. Anyway, I'm not quite done with uh, AI upscaling. Uh, we did that, we covered that last week with uh, Magnific and Topaz uh, Photo AI. Um, but today's Phototech video will explore the creative applications of Magnific, um, the new AI platform. And we'll look at how you can utilize the creative potential of this platform. Right after I finished recording last week's Phototech Tuesday, Magnific upgraded the platform to offer high-res outputs up to 10,000 pixels, putting it on a par with Topaz Photo AI. Uh, now, the, the new creative upscales can be generated for super high resolution. So let's, let's dive into this and take a look. So here, when you, uh, when you go into Magnific, and uh, you, have to, you have to actually create an account to, to work with it here, and I, I know it's really expensive, but bear with me. There's some, uh, some, there's some free options uh, that are available that I'll mention a little bit later. But anyway, uh, here we are in Magnific, and basically you drop an image into this sort of image well right here. And uh, then you can pick a scale factor. So now um, Magnific offers up to 16 times scale factor. Uh, I would say basically what you, what you want to do um, to get the best creative output, start with a low res input and figure that you're going to be half the resolution or four times, the you know, one quarter of the resolution or one eighth of the resolution of your final what you want to end up with for your final output. So here I'm starting with a, a file that's half the resolution of what I want to go for. And, um, and then you're going to pick what you're optimizing for. And this is kind of interesting because um, you can have two different types of portraits, uh, art and illustrations, video game assets, nature and landscape, films and photography, 3D renders, and science fiction and horror. So the idea here is that you pick, these are sort of like training sets where they, they train the AI in certain genres of imagery. And so if, if what you're upscaling is a portrait, then you'd wanna pick one of these two portrait styles. Uh, obviously, if it's an illustration, you pick illustration, um, video game assets, nature and landscape, this particular image is an infrared capture in Iceland. Uh, so I could use nature and landscapes, or you can always use films and photography if what you're dealing with is a photograph. Um, so I found that whether you pick nature and landscapes or films and photography, if it's a photograph, even if it's of nature, either one will give you good results. Um, so a lot of the times I just default to films and photography because I'm not looking for anything that deviates from a photographic look. And um, so, so we'll start with that. And then uh, this is sort of an interesting area. You can write a prompt. Now you'll notice that in this sort of creative section here, you know, once you picked optimize, you have prompt, you have creativity, you have HDR, resemblance. These sliders give you some control over how the rendering proceeds. And there's also these little question mark icons. If you click on that, you'll get a whole uh, bit of information describing how to use this area. So you can, um, you can use, as it says here, you can use your imagination to alter the images by putting in a prompt that drives the rendering in a certain direction. Uh, we'll ignore that for now. Um, you can always just forget a prompt and have it re-render the same image that you've got at a higher res. Uh, same thing with these, these, all these four sliders. They've introduced a new one called fractality or fractality. Uh, fractality, a made up word. But uh, if you click on these little question marks, they'll give you a description of how to use it. Uh, so creativity is uh, how much the AI hallucinates extra information. Uh, HDR is how much detail you're going to be driving into the image. Sometimes you want to put more detail. Sometimes 
not um, and all of these sliders have positive and negative settings and they're sort of synergistic so if we pick a positive creativity setting and a negative resemblance setting we'll end up with something that deviates considerably from the original okay so first off we we always pick you know zeroed out uh, which is the kind of default that's going to give you a rendering that more or less matches uh, your original. So I can pull on this little slider here and see the after version, which in this case at the zero settings, and you can always check up here uh, at the top, you have these little labels that tell you what settings were used for uh, for this image. So let's go through and finish up our, our uh a description of these these sliders and um, and I will get down to the engine here so HDR is how much detail obviously resemblance is how much it resembles fractality is an odd one so what they say here is um, this controls the strength of your prompt and the intricacy per square pixel so you know lower fractality less detail um, but uh, sometimes you can end up with these vertical bands that appear, and we'll show you an example of that. Reducing the fractality might resolve it. And higher fractality, this is kind of interesting because uh, if you use really high uh, values here, you may get um, sort of smaller versions of the image embedded inside itself. You know, you can think of a fractal math where as you zoom into something, it keeps re-rendering at a, and it re-renders the same detail in more and more uh, detail. So you can use these high fractalities and you'll get like little embedded images of the original sort of worked into the image in various places. It's kind of a strange control. So I recommend, uh, experimenting with this and seeing if you can use it creatively. I haven't really gotten too far with this. Um, so for the most part, I'll leave it at zero unless I get those vertical bands and then I'll reduce the fractality. Now the engine, this is uh, another area where um, the default is automatic and presumably automatic just picks one of these um, three automatically. So in, in practice, Magnific Illusio is the smoothest one. And they give you those, that information and click on the little question mark here. You'll see you know, the, the sort of descriptors for this. Uh, so Illusio is the smoothest one. Um, and then Sharpie is the sharpest one with the sharpest detail and the most detail in the image. But sometimes that can make things look too dirty, uh, like put too much detail. So Sparkle is kind of a, a halfway between Illusio, which is the smoothest render. And, you know, if you have an image that has a lot of detail like this, I would recommend either using Sparkle or Sharpie. If you have, say, a portrait or something with, with smooth tones in it, and you don't want to emphasize texture, then you, I would pick Magnificent Illusio. Okay, so once you have settled on your engine, you've got your sliders out, you kick, click on create uh, upscale, and we'll tell you the final size that it's upscaling to, and, and then we get this before and after. Okay, so let's, let's look at some other uh, creativity settings here. So this one, um, it's up to 4K and uh, four times and film and photography using that that uh, optimize for creativity at six HDR at four resemblance at zero fracticality at zero and I'm using the sparkle and you can kind of see now it's changing things the creativity is amped up and we're getting uh, a different interpretation of this. Um, it's adding, you know, all this other detail is, is different than what we had before. And we're starting to see, you know, like this area back here is turning into water, like water runoff. 
Let's go up some more. Here's one where we amped it up even more. Creativity at 8. H stairs at 4. And I took resemblance down to minus 3. So now we're really getting some transformation. It's still... It's still make matching the sort of overall tone and composition. You can kind of see the mountains are staying where they are. But now all this infrared moss is turning into frothy water that Magnific kind of has, has invented this water runoff that's proceeding down. And you can see this area is now all underwater, whereas before, you know, it was just rocks. Um, and now let's see how far we can go. If we really go further, so now we're at creativity at 8, HDR4, resemblance is minus 4 instead of minus 3. In practicality, I, I, I lowered it because I was worried about getting vertical bands. And we'll see those show up pretty soon here. Anyway, this is, <laughs> this is given a prompt. Too. So you can see that the prompt shows up as another little kind of lozenge here. Landscape of an alien planet. So now with that prompt, it's really pushing it in a whole different direction. And you can kind of see all this different detail and really inventive. Like, you know, I don't know what this is. Alien landforms or, you know, life forms. Who knows? Anyway... So here in this one, we have uh, science fiction and horror. So we changed Optimize from film and photography to science fiction and horror. Creativity 10, resemblance minus 10, and we get something really crazy. But here are those vertical bands where it sort of divided the image up into thirds, and it's not consistent across... The whole amount. So we'll try taking the fractality down even more and we get now something like this where there's still kind of a transition here that's kind of odd. My fract fractality is minus 10. So resemblance is minus 10, fractality minus 10, creativity 10, HDR 10, everything's amped up to the max. And it says science fiction and horror. Same alien planet prompt, and we get this. So kind of crazy, but let's let's I can't zoom in here and show you one to one just to give you an idea how much detail is, is embedded in here. So we're gonna go back into Lightroom here. And here's uh here's a hundred percent detail of the original on the left and the magnific upscaled version on the right. And you can kind of see this one is at the default 000, zero, zero everything's zeroed out. And it's doing a really good job of preserving the original information uh, and just sort of adding uh, a little bit of extra sharpness and a little bit of extra detail here. Not it can't really tell, which is good because this one on the on the right is twice the resolution of the one on the left. All right, so now let's look at um, we'll look at another, we'll look at the one that, that converted these moss things into kind of frothy water runoff here. So you can kind of see it's really altered, but the overall shape of these forms is staying the same and it's transformed it into an entirely new image. It's kind of a weird image, but somewhat believable, right? I mean, and then you can kind of see here all this area has turned into frothy water, whereas before it's really infrared moss that's reflecting a lot of infrared energy, and so it's kind of glowing white. So this is all moss here, and here it got transformed into what looks like possibly snow with some water runoff all coming down here. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. And finally, let's look at our our, uh, our other one here, this is the alien planet one, <laughs> and you can kind of see radically altered. It's focused everything. You can kind of see the, the focus falls off back here because I was really focused on the foreground. 
So it's added focus all the way back and it's also invented all this crazy alien stuff because that was the prompt that I gave it. So pretty cool. Let's look at, a, at some other examples. Um, I'll show you a, kind of an interesting, uh, an interesting example here. Here's a, a magnific upscale. It went twice the resolution, uh, or actually, I think this one is four times the resolution. And it's preserved everything pretty much, but it has, it's subtly altered the details. So like this pipe here, this kind of front fork, whatever this thrashing farm machinery is, it's changed the color of it a little bit, give it a little more, sort of popped it out a bit. Everything has got a little bit more edge to it, a little sharper. Um, you know, the trees are a, a little bit sharper. Uh, so this is very usable. And actually, this is a kind of a good enhancement. I, I like this enhancement. All right, let's try uh, another one with even more detail added. So now here, the, the equipment has really changed quite a bit. You can kind of see there's sort of, in, it's invented some details for this portion of the machine here. And it's changed this into a wheel, almost like a motorcycle wheel, you can see. Um, and the, the cypress trees are starting to morph into standing stones. It's kind of, this is more rock-like than tree-like over here. Uh, so you can kind of see interesting deviations. If we look back at the, um, get this to fit, you can kind of see it's still pretty much the same, except it's added some extra clouds in the sky. It's sort of, it's inventing new detail. So you, you, can, you can push Magnific as far as you want or sort of anywhere in between. Let's look at some other examples. Um, all right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use two kind of uh, this is the the pushed example here. So we're we're looking at the original here on on the left and the sort of amped up creatively one on the right. Now th this is very interesting. It looks I mean at, at first glance it doesn't seem like there's that much different, but let's. Uh, Let's zoom in here a bit. So you can kind of see this was an infrared capture and typically the skin gets this really soft, flat kind of glowy. This is, this is direct daylight and there should be a lot more contrast, but typically with infrared, it's, it's very soft and, and it kind of skin has this sort of glowy quality that's, you know, looks like infrared. Now, Magnific, we gave it some creative license here. I think the creativity was up to around six or seven or eight even. And you can kind of see that it didn't understand uh, a blue horse. So this is a blue horse because of the infrared color is all skewed. So it, it decided to wrap the horse in denim, which is it's just crazy. <laughs> gave it a, a coat. But... I like all the extra shape and the, the natural color of the hair now and the skin has gotten kind of natural. And it's, it's this part I, I could do without, right? But because you can render these things multiple times, we could render different versions. And in fact, I can composite a final version. Let's look at the final version here, which was composited in Photoshop from two versions. So I got the shape I wanted in the face and used the same horse, or actually a re-rendered version of the horse, uh, re-rendered in a more normal way. So, so when we look at them here side by side, this one is just, I just picked details that made it just a little bit more interesting, but I had to use the horse from the unaltered version uh, to make my final here. 
this is uh, this Martha's Vineyard one is kind of interesting. Uh, you can kind of see here the one the original is on the left, another infrared capture. And I, I applied a kind of Orton effect to give it just a little bit of a glow. When I re-rendered in Magnific, and I went from fairly low-res version here on the left, uh, I scaled it up a good four times uh, to get into roughly, uh, you know, a, a 6,000 by 4,000 pixel version. And it, look how much detail it added. It added all this extra detail. It crisped up all of the leaves, added focus going back into infinity here. It really falls off pretty bad back here. And here it's all tack sharp. Um, pretty interesting. And uh, you can see it pretty much preserves the original photo, but it enhances the details. All the, and even, even the sand here. Uh, looks more interesting in the magnificent <laughs> the magnificized version all right let's let's look at some more um let's get some more stuff here we'll look at let's look at this portrait here's our original on the left and there's our sort of modestly creative i just amped the creativity to like two i left everything else at zero Let's uh, let's look at this. I'll go and fill. So you can kind of see it's we've got pretty much the same image, but it's now gotten you know just that little bit of creativity has added extra kind of texture and shading. It's it's still preserved the little you know the little uh, piercing here on his lip. It's kind of messed up his the star on his hand though, um, and it's given him eyelashes, and it's decided that this little shadow is like makeup, a little makeup streak here. It's kind of interesting. Now, when I changed the optimize for, I went for science fiction and horror. Uh, we ended up with this. <laughs> So it really got kind of gnarly here. It really changed the uh, the piercing. It's further obscured that that thing on the hand. Let's go back to the. Let's put the original back in here. So yeah, horror show, definitely. It's put like clouds back in here. It's kind of, it's very interesting. And uh, somehow appropriate for this kind of spooky looking guy. This was taken in one of our Harrell workshops. Uh, and we had this really interesting model who uh, had this kind of gothic uh, uh, punk rock kind of look but now totally transformed into sort of a horror show kind of thing. Really fascinating. Now, I mentioned before that Magnific is kind of expensive. It's $39 a month. And when you compare that to, like, you can get Photoshop and Lightroom for $9.99. You know, that, that seems like, a, a, you know, really expensive for this sort of one-trick pony now. Um, there is suddenly now a new... AI upscaler that is offering a free tier so you can play around with it for for as long as you want uh, but the resolutions capped out at 2048 let's take a look at that this is called Crea uh, k-r-e-a dot a-i and uh, here's the same portrait um, we got a, kind of a similar thing you drop an image here in Crea you drop an image in this little well you What's what's interesting about Crea is that it will look at the at the image, and write a prompt for it. So it gives you the prompt that matches the image: a man with tattoos and a leather jacket poses for a black and white photo. Okay, and we have our upscale factor. As I said, um, Crea caps out at twenty forty eight in the long dimension, so it's just not going to give you anything bigger than that uh, for the free tier. 
Uh, and I imagine that when you pay for it, you get access to the higher resolution. Um, it has a style, which in this case, I did none. Uh, and you can kind of see it. It basically didn't do very much. It did mess up his piercing. Um, but we got it fairly smooth, although it did transform his beard into part of the leather jacket. So again, AI sometimes just gets unclear about what's going on. But what was interesting here is that it kind of sharpened up that tattoo and it gave him more of a tattoo on the back of his hand. So Kriya is interesting. Um, and here's a more, here's a more <laughs> creative upscale that used the portrait style. And it see, the portrait style is, with Kriya seems to make it more glamorous. I mean, he's gone from, you know, kind of this goth looking guy to, you know, a little more of a matinee idol sort of guy here. Even though I changed the prompt to a wolf man with tattoos, right? He doesn't look very wolf ish except maybe, you know, his hair has come down over his forehead a little bit. And uh, they've given him a kind of a leather back of his palm here. So uh, different than Magnific. Uh, but perhaps worth playing around with since it's free, it might be worthwhile uh, working with this. Let's look at a few more magnific examples uh, in Lightroom. It's, it's really kind of interesting. Um, let's look at this, the Venice Carnival ones here. So uh, right now, in this case, I have the original on the right and the, ups, the you know, magnific version uh, on the left. This was taken in our uh, Venice Carnival photo tour. We do the special effects shoot where I do some light painting in the background. And I gave um, Magnific the science fiction and horror uh, engine to upscale this. And I got this. And if we, if we kind of zoom in here, you can kind of see Magnific, with, the, with, the, with these Venice Carnival ones, it uh, loves to take the mask off and put a regular face in there. And then, since it was a science fiction and horror, it gave me these really kind of scary looking, <laughs> scary clowns, I guess is what it could be here. And it altered the costumes and everything. It's, just, it's really pretty fascinating what it, what it decides to hallucinate and changed the, the way the light painting looks here. It's all pretty interesting. It's also really altered the cathedral. This is St. Mark's Cathedral. Uh, um, and this is this is what it looks like, but Magnific decided to really alter. You can kind of see in, the, in these areas, it's completely reinvented the design of the building, but it's made it sharper and, uh, you know, more, more uh, maybe more interesting. I don't know, hard to say. Let's go back to fit. All right. This is a this is another this this one. <laughs> these are different, radically different because instead of using Magnific to invent something new, uh, I used another platform called Leonardo. Um, and I took this image into Leonardo and I said, give me a Japanese castle. Um, and what we got was something that looked like this. And then I used Magnific to scale it back up to give me higher resolution than the Leonardo AI could deliver. Um, so let's look at these again. Let's go to 100%. So this was a, a, a black and white 830 nanometer infrared capture. You can kind of see the trees are got that glowy infrared quality. And I gave Leonardo the prompt that this was a winter scene and I wanted a Japanese castle instead of the Scottish castle that was there originally. And it also totally cleaned up the noise. Um, 
and you can kind of see now it's it's like a total winter scene here this is all infrared but now we have winter and i composited two samurai in that were rendered in mid journey so uh you know we have a pretty interesting image here here's another one we'll end with this one um so uh again i went into leonardo we'll look at that in a second I went into leonardo to have it re-render this in a in a different way so and it, and then i took the render which actually looked like this so you can see on the on the left is the Leonardo low res typical low res AI rendering and upscaled using Magnific. It did alter the vehicle, which I was hoping for more of a lunar rover type of thing. And I ended up getting kind of this goofy <laughs> Volkswagen thing uh, in this strange alien environment, but um, pretty fascinating stuff. So our cypress trees turned into alien monoliths of some kind here. <laughs> well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully this has provided some inspiration for your own work with these new AI rendering tools. So um, yeah, it, it this is just some wild stuff and you really have to play around with it uh, to get a handle on what's going on here. How can you use this? I think we're we have the potential for what I'm going to be calling extreme post-processing, where you take your image into an AI and in the process you can alter it, add sharpness and detail where there wasn't any, um, increase the depth of field. We're, we're really very close to this notion of the, the Blade Runner scene where Harrison Ford is looking at uh, some bad... Uh, security footage and all he does is say enhance zoom in enhance and the ai kind of does it for him and that's sort of we're we're very close to that now we have generative film in photo generative fill in photoshop who knows what else is going to happen but i i, I really think that uh, we're on the cusp of a whole new era in photography computational photography can you imagine having this in, embedded in your iphone Certainly, uh, new uh, new phones coming out with a with embedded AI. Uh, Android just announced a whole slew of AI features for their mobile phone. It's going to filter its way into the camera app, and we're going to have AI re-rendering on the fly to to enhance your images. All those low light, grainy shots, thing of the past, that will all just be re-rendered. Uh, to give us the impression of the photograph at a much higher quality than could possibly be captured with a cheap little plastic lens on those those iPhones. So um, anyway, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you won't miss another Photo Tech Tuesday. And I'll finish here with a little slideshow of uh, some of my experiments with creative AI rendering. Let's take a look. Okay, starting with our, our first image here, um, just to run through the examples again. This is the, the frothy water version. And the alien landscape version. Getting into our, our infrared capture on Martha's Vineyard here. And with the magnificized version, just to give it some extra detail and snap. Our infrared capture of the horse on the beach here. And the first pass with uh, Magnific 
kind of messes up the horse, puts a, a, a suit on the horse, and uh, we'll composite this back in with the original and, and just update the, the feeling on the, the girl in the water here. Here's another one I showed this last week, infrared capture. And I ended up compositing back in sky and other elements just to smooth out the sky in the background. But I got this really crispy, um, full color, looks more like a normal photograph sort of look. This was a, an iPhone capture on the, just running by the road and seeing the storm cloud. Um, brought it into Magnific, gave it a prompt of lightning in the, in the clouds, and we ended up with this. You can kind of see a few little lightning strikes there, and the clouds got a, a lot more gnarly looking. This is in Pienza, an infrared capture, and uh, letting uh, Magnific upscale and kind of add detail in the, just the foreground elements, so the tree and the wall and, and the people get somewhat enhanced and I, I left everything else alone. Here's our guy again, the two versions. A bit scarier and even scarier. Uh, this is the girl from my my grunge uh, Phototech Tuesday, and uh, I gave Magnific just the prompt grunge, and this is what it did. So she got freckles and uh, changed her hair. Pretty interesting. Here's another one with sort of a more normal Magnific upscale. This was a very early digital capture, so it was fairly low res and I composited these thing, elements together in Photoshop. Magnific just takes it into a much higher res and crisps everything up. It's, it's changed your face, you know, but uh, pretty interesting. In Venice Carnival, we have the devil. The flames are supplied by uh, Pixel Stick. So this is all captured in one shot and the pixel stick allows you to sort of paint a bitmap image into the scene. And, uh, but it's sort of low res. You can kind of see um, in this area the sort of pixelized version of the flames because it's fairly low res when it, you, you use it. And Magnific kind of re-renders the flames in more detail, takes away the the video line or the pixel is pixelization. And it also added a face there. Um, this is pretty interesting um, when you zoom in uh, to look at the detail. Incredible amount of detail was added into this. Here's our uh, St. Mark's Basilica. And now totally transformed into kind of more of a horror show <laughs> kind of thing. Here's a waterfall in Iceland, very famous one that you can walk behind. I'm in the cave behind the waterfall. And this was an iPhone shot, which was the only way, I, it was the widest lens I could manage was in this iPhone. And uh, it's not really great quality. Uh, we can just simply magnificize it and get quite a bit more detail, uh, much higher res kind of look out of it. And uh, then I took this into uh, Mid Journey and re rendered it uh, with this as a reference image and then upscaled it again in Magnific. And I got this completely different scene without the people. And um, yeah, so, so kind of fascinating stuff. Pretty much preserves the same layout, but uh, we got a completely different image. And again, we talked about this one. This was captured in Scotland with uh, an 830 nanometer IR capture, infrared, black and white. And I told it uh, I wanted a, 
color scene. This one was uh, referenced and uh, uh, re-rendered in Leonardo and then brought back into Magnific to give us the high res uh, of the Japanese castle in a winter landscape with our samurais there. And again, our cypress trees, simple Magnific upscale, sharpened, and then our kind of fantasy upscale, turning it into an alien monolith landscape scene here. All right. I hope you can join us on one of our upcoming photo tours. And you can take a shot of this QR code to sign up for our email list. And I'll see you next time.